Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 6 a.m. on Saturday in Germany. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you that Globe at Night begins their next project. And perhaps you recall on July 9th, I was talking about Globe at Night. And this is a project you, where you can help scientists determine light pollution levels in your area. This project goes from July 30th to August 8th, and the target constellations are Cygnus in the Northern Hemisphere and Scorpius in the Southern Hemisphere. I actually have a link. Oh, let me share that. Let me pull this one out first. This one here, trade that one. One moment, please. All right, so... Here's the link that will take you to the six step uh, page and you can uh, go through that and see the links to the project and the constellations and everything. Oh, yeah, That's, good idea. Thank yeah. you, Jeff. Okay. So tonight and Jeff's having some trouble <laughs> with he's still kind of sick. Um, I will go ahead and talk about this because we had Grant Blaisdell scheduled from Copernic Space and he was going to talk to us about um, investing in space for fun and profit. And uh, yeah, I actually look forward to talking to a finance absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Oh, and uh, oh, that's nice. Thanks so much, Cliff. Yeah. Happy birthday to Jeff. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Cliff. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I was very much looking forward to this, too. And I'm kind of concerned about Grant. If anybody knows Grant and can help us find out what's going on, because I've completely lost contact with him as of, like, July 21st. We had been going back and forth. We had, you know, I confirmed uh, right around then that it was still working out for him for tonight. And then I wanted to do a test, and I kept trying to get a hold of him all i have is email though so um but anyway yeah we will keep trying to find out what's going on with grant and invite him back again because i absolutely want to hear about that uh -huh. too um but yeah we uh we don't know what happened exactly uh we would like to hear from anybody out there who does know anything about this so let's see uh i'm gonna go ahead and um run this we'll be back in 6.8 seconds Okay, so tonight I had an idea, and maybe you've heard of open mic night. Maybe we do an open guest night since we don't have anything lined up uh, alternatively to having the guest, and maybe we'll plan for that in the future because this is the first time it's ever really happened to us. We've uh, been really, really, really lucky. We've had a lot of really <coughs> great people. <coughs> One of the great things about doing a live show. <laughs> is it live or is it Memorex? You remember that ad, right? If you're old enough. So, yeah, if you would like to... Um, oh, I thought I put the link in. Do, you, do, do. Nope. you pulled it out. Right yep. There. Okay. Here's the link. If you want to join us on our show. Thanks, Jeff. Thought I had it in there. Uh, go ahead and click on that link and it will queue you up right and then we can bring you on live that's how the studio works this is stream yard and we can uh, have a chat and actually cliff i would love to hear about the um what's happening in your area we know that there is a new space space program happening and we want to know more about that of course you know david is uh, a big proponent of that too um cliff is in uh, australia so yeah thanks so much and uh if uh, we don't have somebody who wants to talk, I guess it's going to be kind of short because, of course, we have our ephemeris, and I do have 
another guest lined up soon. That just happened today. I don't even think you know about it, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, Chris Kent, uh, he agreed to come on the show oh. uh, late in late August. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, that link, if you want to join us, just <coughs> click on the link. And I think you type in your name. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, and then we'll bring you on with us and we can, we can have a, like I said, open guest night, just like open mic night. And if you want to be funny, that's okay too. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Hi. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Who do we have? Hey Cliff, your head's, your head, you're like this. Move your camera a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Hey Cliff. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoops. I'm not muting you, but maybe you are. Ah, no, well, help. One of the joys of live. <laughs> can can see you, but we can't hear you, Cliff. Yeah. It, no. <laughs> nope. No luck. Oh, my God. What happened? I've got... I, it doesn't say mute. I've got you here. Yeah. Everything oh. looks good on the studio side. <laughs> Do you, Cliff, you might need to join a audio <coughs> on your end. I love this. Well, we'll give it the old college try, right? Yeah. Hey, Cliff, why don't you type and we'll talk. We'll answer you. I still see you talking, but I can't hear you. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you have a headset? Maybe we try with a headset. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody else wants to join us, we put that link in the chat and uh, I can add it again if you want. We'll see. And I, you may have to allow it. Yeah, you might have to join audio. You have to, may have to allow it. <laughs> and Cliff was actually one of our very first guests. So glad you can join us and you come most weeks. Really appreciate that. Yeah, still can't hear you, Cliff. Yep. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sad. We would love to talk with you. That's why with most guests, we... That's we like why to we do on, the test. Yeah, we get them on early. Yeah. <coughs> and work through all of this. <coughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry, Cliff. We can see you, but we cannot hear you. Uh, tell you what, Cliff. Why don't you go back out, come back in, and we'll try again. <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear you. Sorry, man. Oh, what a bummer. All right, so I think someone else did so. Yeah, Dan, hi. Hey, Dan, Uh, you're moving around a lot. That's going to be... Yeah, well, yeah. You're going <laughs> to... Okay. Oh, we can there he is. Hear. Hi, Dan. <laughs> we can actually hear you. Am I audible here? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, great, great. Yeah, good to see you guys. Um, Likewise, thanks for joining us. I'm so sorry we don't have our guest. We are very concerned oh, about yeah, him. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we do have someone else lined up. You got something quick you want to share with us? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I uh, want people to save the date for the street fair in Thousand Oaks this year. Uh, oh, October 17th. It's a Sunday from nine to four, and uh, I will have a booth next to the Conejo Valley Makers. All right, huh. that sounds um that sounds amazing. I, I've heard of the Conejo Valley Makers. Yeah, they actually meet um, every uh, Thursday night uh, for an hour. Hey, hey, Dan, do you have a link? If you do, would you mind putting it into the chat and sharing, and uh, we can copy that and add it to the screen because we're broadcasting to two Facebook groups and the YouTube channel. Okay. All right. Um, I I guess I could just uh, well if if they want to go to Facebook and look for Dan Tweed for. Thousand Oaks City Council. I'll, I'll post uh, the information there. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, if you want to give us that link, that's fine too. And I plan to have some space-oriented uh, displays and things going on. All there. right. Nice. So, Thanks October a lot. 17th, uh, Rotary Club 29th Annual Street Fair. We'll see you there. Very nice. cool. Yeah, CB Valley's got one coming up in October too. I just heard right. about that today. All right. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. All right. So we also have, and uh, let me see if I can say this right, Jafer. Well, Ethiopia. Let's, let's bring him on and make Hello. sure. Hello. Welcome the to the show. Pronunciation. 
Hi, tell us your name and tell us where you are. Can you hear us? We can hear something, but it doesn't sound like speaking. <laughs> Oops. Okay. No, guess not. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we will watch for that. Let me go ahead and add the link again because I know sometimes people come and go. Oh, we got somebody. Is that did Cliff come back? Yeah, hi, Cliff. All okay, right. Hi, can, you hear, can you hear me there now? Is. We can hear you. I know sometimes people come and go. About oh, bloody time. Somebody, oh, Cliff. Yeah, hi, Cliff. All right. okay, if you're hearing, hearing us you somewhere, hearing you somewhere, you want to turn that off. Stop bloody time. Oh, Cliff. Yeah, right. okay, okay, if you're hearing us somewhere, try the headset. Turn off. <laughs> no, but he's Stop running out of time. Oh, Cliff. <laughs> what? Okay, if you're hearing us somewhere, try the headset. Try the headset. Why is it going? Because you already have us broadcasting somewhere. There's a 10 second delay. And and why yeah. is it looping? <laughs> because there's a 10 second delay. So we're broadcasting live. There's a 10 second delay, and we're hearing it back from what you're 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 listening to us as well, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, at least we got sound. <laughs> I don't know how to control it. It's, I, this wasn't like last time. Yeah. Well, we we had plenty of time to work out the bugs last time. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's why we do the testing in advance. Make sure the tech is working. We understand what's going on. So yeah. Hey, uh, what's happening down there? What's going on? We want to hear about your space program. What you're doing? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm still it keeps repeating. I don't know why. No. Cuz you're hearing us somewhere else with another tab open on your browser or something. And there's a delay. You probably have both Facebook <laughs> and StreamYard open. If you if you mute Facebook, <coughs> you'll be able to Um hang on. Hear us. Streamer. How's that? Well, how's that? I it's think you did it. Yay. All right. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I got you now. I know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, um, yeah, we're going back into lockdown for three days in Queensland here. Um, yeah, three somebody's, days. Uh, yeah, they, they're doing a forced lockdown, so uh, everybody's not allowed to go out and do do stuff because uh, s uh, about six people caught it down in Brisbane, which is only a couple of hundred k's. Well, not even that. It's uh, 132 k's away from uh, where I live here. Um, but yeah, I did the did my astronomy club last Wednesday. Had uh, had seven members come along, and uh, we watched some videos, and we showed the videos of. Um, uh, Jeff Bozos and Richard Branson uh, going oh, cool. into uh, space and uh, doing doing now now um, in my own lifetime um, anybody can go to space. That's amazing. From uh, watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon um, when I was yep. like uh, nine years old, and uh, all those sci-fi movies and all that. Uh, Two thousand and one. Um, yep. I saw that when I was eight. Um, with um, there was a it was dual show, um, Charlton Heston and Silent Green. So oh. hopefully, um, we're not going to be eating dead people <laughs> in the future. Um, but um, basically, um, when 2001, um, everything's just about come true. I mean, uh, video phones, um, flying into space, um. Yep. Tourism. I mean, wow! This is this is this is quite amazing. Um, you know, we have uh, the International Space Station. Um, there was nothing like that back in 1968. Um, it, it's just 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 astounding. So, um, yeah, tourism now. Um, you know, if you've got got a bit of bread, you can uh, take an 11 minute flight. It's pretty quick, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it would be. Um, it would be a, a, a thrill and a half. Um, I'm glad to oh. see that um, Wally Funk got to go. Yes. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that that was quite amazing. Um, somebody uh, on another another show said that um, 
uh, okay, I was a paid, if you were a paid passenger uh, on that flight, um, I would, wouldn't be interested in talking to Jeff Bezos. I'd be rather talking to Wally um, and, and all the stuff that she's done. Just incredible. 19,600 19, air hours. I mean, like, oh, yeah. seriously, that's did, did she actually ever get out of a plane? Or she just <laughs> all the time? That's a lot of hours, man. You're doing oh, a lot, man. man. It's no longer work, right? <laughs> oh, wow. It's it's quite amazing. Yeah. So, and uh, you guys, uh, everything good over there? Um, Except I mean, for um, this guy. He's still sick. Uh, yes. Yes. So well, it's, it's I'm not bad. actually sick anymore. <laughs> it's just that I cough for a month after I've been sick. So. It's just gonna. Oh, I'm okay. just gonna cough. All righty, um, I had a lucky break the other day. Um, I picked up a, a huge me wedge for my telescope, my big twelve what inch. What is LX. that? I saw the What's picture, that? but I'm like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's a me wedge that goes underneath uh, an old azimuth um, large um, LX two hundred. Uh, and that turns it into an equatorial telescope. Um, it's, they're worth about $2,000, and I picked it up for $500. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, I was, I was extremely lucky. So um, hopefully I'll be able to get the, the big gun out very soon with, uh, with the weather. It's been pretty good clearing up here. We've had nothing but uh, lots of bad weather um, Ah, oh, for months and months and months. So, uh, and now they're starting to burn off uh, in pre um, um, readiness for the uh, bushfire season. So now oh. we've been getting smoke in the net. In the <laughs> come home and all you can see is hay, smoke haze everywhere, and big red suns up in the sky. You know, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So, so what can that, you tell things have been good. You, what can you tell us about Australia's uh, space program? I want to hear more about that. What space program? That's what's annoying me. Um, New Zealand has just launched another uh, um, satellite, um, and we seem to be sitting on our ass doing nothing. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, there's always a bit of talk, but uh, nothing's happening. So I don't know what's – there is, you know, there's talk about doing it, but, hey – Hi, Dustin. He's a good friend of mine, and he's just uh, acquired a humongous 16-inch, uh, 17-inch Dob, Trust Dob. Oh, it's it's. he's going to need a new car to carry it around. It's that big. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so maybe Dustin so, um, will come and talk to us, too. I just put the link back into the chat, and uh, yep. we something happened to our guests. We don't know what, what exactly. We're, we're really concerned about uh, Grant. And uh, we'll bring him on as, as soon as we can, as soon as we know more and uh, understand what's happening. So, oh, here we go. 18 inch. Wait, it's, a, it's called a Stargate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Oh, man. I, that must have cost him a fortune. <laughs> must have cost him a fortune. <laughs> but well, it's, let's see, um, yes. Let's, but, see, let's see if I have a deal like you do. <laughs> You're always talking yeah, about these deals, knows. man. I love it. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So I, I've got all the new electronics for my LX two hundred. Um, I got that from George Dadashi in um, down in California. There, um, I was, uh, I've got it, that all to go in. I've got I've got all the upgrades. Um, so I'm going to have a really big cannon soon. So I'm looking forward to it and getting out there and uh, doing some stuff. So, um, what are you planning on for uh, next week's show? Oh, yeah, we... Um, Let's find the notes on that. <laughs> it's... Um, Where is it? Uh, <laughs> there it is. Jeff found it. Yeah, okay. Zwicky Chemical Factory. It's another Zooniverse project where you um, where you match spectra, with, you know, the actual spectra with what the, compu the computer gives you four or five different options that it came up with, and you match the yeah. best one so that you can yeah. train it. Hey, we got a question. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Splash Adam. Appreciate you being here again. Let's see. The question is, is it possible to clean space pollution slash space junk 
We launched more to space, but it, it adds more to the space pollution. What are the best effective ways to clean it? There are people working on that out yeah. there. And yeah. uh, I think it's an incredibly valuable resource that we absolutely want to recapture and continue to put into, you know, put into action. Yeah, they've got uh, some a couple of different forms where they're um, trying um, like um, a, a, a net um, feature that comes out of a, a capsule and, and grabs grabs a, a dead satellites and things like that. Yeah. Um, India, unfortunately, um, blew up one of their military uh, um, yeah. missiles uh, just recently and caused you know thousands of more bits of debris up there which was pretty pretty bloody silly um why they did it uh, India or China? I, don't know. I thought china india, did it. india. no that was india mm. oh i hadn't heard about that oh, they, yeah they 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 launched a um a killer missile and it took out one of their uh, defunct military um satellites or something and uh, it was just yeah it just added thousands and thousands of more pieces of junk up there but uh the, it's the small stuff that's uh mostly um um that's that's the real danger the big stuff they can spot pretty easy the international space station um, can move out of the road and uh, all that sort of thing um, by adjusting their their altitude um but there, there was a good video just recently where even Chris Hadfield is sitting there t chatting away, talking about you can sit there near the wall and you can actually hear tink, tink, tink on the side of the International Space Station. Um, and it's, it's uh, actually debris actually hitting it um, because the particles are that small. Um, the uh, space shuttle used to get hit quite often. Um, on the windscreens and stuff like that, uh, and it's the small stuff that's the the worrying right. bit. Uh, yeah. Not yeah. so much the big stuff. Yeah, I've seen um, plans with like big balloons, and it's not mm. not to go clear random patches, but to clear the patches, you know, basically in front of the space station or in front of an asset. Oh, a cow scooper. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> sort of like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, you and now they, about. <laughs> pooper scooper, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mrs. has got one for the horse poo. <laughs> no, I was talking yeah, about yeah. On, the on the trains here, they have this wedge in the front. If there is yeah. anything, um, oh, yeah, 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 but I think they call yeah, it we, a, a cattle clearer or something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, cow catcher. Um, yeah, yeah, get get them out of the road. Um, and also for you, the snow, yeah. Um, yeah, snow. Wow, I've seen some of those uh, shots where you can't even see the train; yep. it's buried, and yep. all of a sudden it just comes out of nowhere, and the spray of snow just coming out everywhere. Wow, it's it's quite amazing. Where we don't have that problem here in um, Australia because it's too goddamn hot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do have a. Uh, winter here and we do have snow fields and ski season but um um our highest mountains only um eight eight thousand meters it's it's not very not very, an eight oh. th yeah eight thousand meters it's not very high at all so um that's down at uh, mount kosciuszko and stuff in new south wales but, but uh it, yeah we we don't have much of it much of snow that's probably why we're all, all by hell yeah. that's hey? probably, probably why you were getting nosebleeds at mount wilson right because <laughs> Higher than you've ever been. Oh yeah, <coughs> bloody hell yeah! Um, and on the way home, we went to some uh, lookout, and it was way up in the over the range. And uh, yeah, um, Dave was having a bit of hard time um, breathing, and even um, I'm walking around going, hey, "This is this is this is different." Um, it was really hard to get enough oxygen, even if you're walking around. So. Um, yeah, altitude adjustment uh, was uh, quite necessary. Um, yeah, if you go up there suddenly, it, it really yeah, it gives you a hard time, eh? <laughs> never yeah. have never had that before. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't have that problem here in Australia. So, um, right, right. Um, um, what else? Um, um, Yes, I've been acquiring more cameras and stuff like that for astrophotography and showing cool. people how they can um, simply do it with a tripod and just a, a normal camera. Um, oh, and take cool. a 20-second shot. 
Mm. Get some, um, uh, get some just, videos of that. Get some videos of that. I would love to learn that stuff. And you know what? If you want to do something together, we can make a class for people that, you know, we could put out there. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sounds, sounds great. Possibilities. Um, Possibilities, you know. Yeah. Well, well, I'm still hoping to come over in 24 for the uh, the eclipse. Um, I'm I'm looking looking forward to that. Um, now with my my new job, I'm um, a bit more affluent with uh, some money. I'm, I'm, I've been uh, I'm in a job now that um, I can start affording to do things. Oh, that's great! Of, yeah, uh, let us, week by week. Let us <laughs> week know by week was a pain in the butt. Yes. <laughs> Let us know if you're in town because in the in the states because um, I actually have a lot of uh, family in Ohio, which I think is one of the places on the path. Now I don't know. We'll have to look at, and it's not too early to start planning. We'll have to look at like. Totality. I think it's actually the more the east. I think it's more the east coast, down yes. down through um, like like New Yorkish way down, headed towards Texas um, to Mexico. Um, I'd, I'd love to catch up with Steve um, as well, um, Steve Woodward and, and you guys. Uh, you know, you, you were brilliant um, to, towards Dave and myself over there. Um, wasn't expecting all that. Um, you know, you, you're such a, a great, great couple too. Um, Thank you very yes, much. Yes, saw that. We do have another question. Let's see. Uh, yes. Thanks, Flash Autumn, come, for coming back. And uh, let's see. the Well, the Chinese... There was something, but that's already passed, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's already gone. That's already been done and dusted. I think um, it fell into the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just uh, crashed into the Indian Ocean, but they had no control over it. it luckily, it went in the ocean and, and not yeah. onto um, land, <coughs> um, or else that could have been pretty damn devastating. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, kind, for, kind of like how we dropped us, dropped us space station on australia back Wait, way what? back when yeah, skylab 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 fell in australia yep. oh i didn't know that yeah of course it's yeah. pretty yeah pretty yeah um somebody <laughs> um yeah it was in in uh west australia south australia somewhere around that and it was some like uh fuel tanks or something it was large cylinders really 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 big 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 and they were coated with um insulation that's probably why they survived yes. the burn up but um yeah oh. they they did crash they did crash crash down and uh yeah somebody somebody was going to try to sell them back to nasa but um obviously the fbi just said no you're not <laughs> so um he thought he was going to make a big big quit out of it uh but no oh, he didn't uh, i remember that quite, quite well someone else came and uh, hi ac thanks for joining us and thanks for your yeah. Comment here: India's anti-satellite missile test conducted on 27 March. Um, good news: says Microsat R was relatively low orbit. Oh, and we got more. So let's read the rest of it here. Most of the pieces created. Okay, we'll fall in a couple. Oh, a couple of weeks and months. So it sounds like there's more from the Indian, since the satellite is not incredibly large for a spacecraft. Here's the rest. It's not something that will create a lot of debris that we have. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, where, where's, yeah, yeah, that was fairly low. The Chinese anti-satellite test earlier um, was much higher. So, yeah. um, you know, the Indian one, a good chunk of the debris immediately hit the atmosphere and burned yeah. up. The rest of it but, is close enough that in the next few years it's going to hit the, it's going to slow down from the upper at, upper atmosphere just slowing it down is going to come out the yeah. chinese one was high enough that yeah that a lot of it's still up there but it's still still the optimum word is uh it's going to take years yep um and that is yeah. that's the problem yep um I, I, if anything larger than like a golf ball i can't trace and man you want to see what i um you know even a piece of paint can do it's it's amazing when it's traveling yeah, at seven seven flat. miles a second. Yeah. <laughs> Go and, right uh, through, yeah. So Splash Adam came back. Fortunately, the Chinese rocket fell to the ocean. Uh, launches plant uh, plant first. Yeah, the the idea is to plan first, um, but not all the countries are cooperating in that way. So mm, yeah. yeah, 
Yep. And, and you can't always control it, even if you expect it to be like in the middle of the Pacific. If it catches a bounce when it hits the atmosphere, it could end up in one of the islands. Well, and yeah. then there's the, and then there's all these rocks out there. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen with those? We we really should have a system in place that will help us in for all these different things. I mean, why not? Um, well, when Arecibo um, broke up, that was that was one of the uh, the best radar um, tracking devices for finding those uh, la those chunks of rock and, and things debris flying around. And now we don't have Arecibo. Um, we're in a bit of a pickle there. Um, I don't know what they they are going to do because none of the other um, radio telescopes are actually set up for um, tracking targets like that anymore so um oh, and okay. it was a and it was and it's and it was so big um Arecibo, so it, it was much more um much more accurate so um yeah but, so uh, that's a bit thought, of pity thought i saw something somewhere that there's you well, know the chinese, a building play, yeah, chinese the, or, the chinese have one but you have to wonder how much information you're actually going to get out of them Ding. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> you know, I don't. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't be holding my breath. Um, hey, AC, where yeah. are you? And uh, thanks so much for all the comments. Uh, well, Arecibo, even though it can only look straight up, it was on the planet that's rotating, so it got, you know, some part of the sky. And they could move the focal point on it. Um, they could uh, move the receiver, so they actually had a cone. They had a cone that they could yeah. like a cone straight up. Oh from yeah. From the surface. Okay, got it. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. Would love to know where you are, and and uh, I don't know if you've been here before, but I think this is the first time we've been able to interact with you. All right. So let's see what else. AC, uh, the U.S. had the space fence that was decommissioned several years ago. Oh, I don't know what this mm. is. Do you know what this is? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, basically, a tracker more. as well. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Okay. AC. Yeah. Well. Uh -huh. I, AC will hopefully tell us more about uh, about all that, and and uh, I would love to know your background too, AC. That would be really fun. Maybe, and maybe, hey, maybe, maybe AC will become a, a guest someday. <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe AC stands for AC Cobra. Uh, maybe he drives a Cobra. <laughs> I drive a Corvette. So <laughs> yeah, so. first time, first time I remember seeing AC with with our show. And thanks for it. Looks like uh, finding us on YouTube. Awesome. All right. Yeah, okay. well, I, I, I share I share this show um, with on my site, and uh, the, you're getting quite a few people from my astronomy club, and that actually now now watching you guys. So um, the word's getting out. Um, yes, thank so you so I, much. I hope that is a good. I hope that's a good thing because uh, I've got something like a, a hundred and hundred and twenty odd members around the oh. world now. Wow. Um, nice. So I'm um, also sharing stuff on the uh, the youth group over in the states there. Oh, the Alpo. Through, um, yeah, yeah, Alpo um, with uh, uh, Pamela Shevik. I think I think yeah. that's how she pronounces it. Um, one of these days, I'm going to catch up with her. Um, and that great yeah. big reflector refractor telescope that they've got it's a it's a monster. But oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah, do I'm, all the sun I'm, observing. I'm, if you could talk her into coming on the show, we, we would love to talk to her too. Oh, here we go. Uh, AC says it was a 200 megahertz constant fan beam and receiving stations were spread across the U.S. to detect, to detect orbiting reflection of signal. Lock it up. I'm a little confused about that, but okay. But Do you get that? <laughs> yeah, essentially, okay. they were looking for, basically spread Look all it up. the place looking for stuff that... <coughs> That um, that was in orbit. Okay. So they could. All right. So that's the that's the space fence that yep. AC. Oh, I can show it again. U.S. had a space fence that was decommissioned. Yep. I think that's what. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Cliff. And uh, you know, it'd be great to have you as a guest on sometime too again. So, oh, oh we got one more. Look it up. Oh, look it up. Got it. Okay. <laughs> look it up. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah. Typo. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, space fence. All right, and uh, splash autumn. How long does it take to capture the first image of a black hole? Oh, that was a very long process. We saw. Oh, I think it was yes. a Nova. If you've ever heard of Nova, it's a great yep. show, 
uh, from from a from the public broadcasting service. Um, they actually did a whole like documentary on how that went, and it was just an incredible like like across the globe organized effort to get that image. And I mean, yep, they had to use a whole heap of telescopes. Yeah, a whole they heap did. of telescopes, and and many All teams at the same time. Yep. yep, and then they then they had many teams processing the image later because there were a number of ways to do it, right? And mm -hmm. so then the teams got together. They were all separated, and then they came together and said, "Well, here's what we have, and here's what we have," and and they sort of compared notes, and they came up with that the image that's very famous now. It kind of looks like a a donut. <laughs> yes, it was. It's an incredible show. I, I highly recommend watching that. Um, I remember seeing a photo that they actually had to send all the hard drives from everywhere around the world. Yep. Um, yes. And it was, a, it was a bloody stack of hard drives, massive stack of hard drives, because you yep. couldn't send the data. Um, they, we would lock up all the internet because there was so much data. Um, oh, so they all okay. individually sent the, the hard drives so that they could download download the hard drives one at a time and then use some supercomputer and yeah, work it all out. But yeah, yeah it was it was um, it was terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data. Yep. So um, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, radio so, so ham radio okay. operators, is that what you mean, AC? And so if they were doing that before, why? I mean that. Oh, well. That'd be doing it now, no, right? Basically, they were using the space fence transmissions. Okay. <coughs> All right, I get the picture. Interesting. So it sounds yeah. like we could do that again. <laughs> you know, you want to okay. create jobs, rebuild Arecibo, rebuild the space fence. You know, we, we had these great things, and if they're, you know, wearing out and stuff like Arecibo obviously fell apart what's you know what's the harm in rebuilding stuff and anyway my soapbox it's coming up with the money and somebody willing to spend it that is the problem that is the major problem it's yeah. uh now like uh Arecibo on something say when it was first built it probably cost like 50 million dollars and now it cost like a billion dollars um, you know, so the you know, cost yeah. of everything's just you quadrupled um, dramatically. Yeah, so nobody wants to do anything anymore. So um, yeah, except except if you're Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Can black holes die? Yes. I have heard about them evaporating. Yes. yes. Basically, yes, they do. They don't draw anything in them. They do evaporate <coughs> simply because when a photon just hits the edge of the um, of the event horizon. It can um, it can basically trap half of the photon, which is a combination of uh, um, electron and anti-electron. And so, eventually, electrons will come off of the <coughs> the um, black hole. And since you can't get something without losing something, that's coming from the black hole. So yeah. eventually yeah. it'll evaporate, but yeah, Hawking I, radiation I, as AC does. So AC Hawking has radiation. More, AC has a couple more comments here. Uh, the US has a new system. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Is that your cat, Cliff? More. Yes. <laughs> Hello. And uh, uh, Hawking radiation. Yeah, Hawking radiation. That's Hawking what that's radiation. called. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So awesome. black holes will Thanks, will eventually evaporate. So, yep. uh, but. It is take a long time. Yep. Take a long time. I kind of wonder yeah. though if all that stuff went in and it evaporates, where does it go? <laughs> well, it ends up being electrons and anti electrons. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, assuming the universe doesn't do a big crunch, okay. eventually everything spreads out. Yep. The black holes have eaten everything they can. Yep. Then they start evaporating. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. But still, that will take a long, long time. Yeah. Oh, We're yeah. Talking billions and trillion. billions. We're talking yeah. trillions of years. Trillions. Trillions. Right. It, right. Takes, it takes trillions of years for a star to finally, like even if it turns into a white dwarf and then to a red dwarf, to cool down. Uh, it takes trillions of years. Yeah. They'll, they'll still be around for a long, long time. Unless they hit something or get sucked into yes. a black hole and torn yeah. apart. So, you know. 
I've heard so, that black hole is much bigger. So I had to, I had to a lot years from Earth. I hit the comet by IC, but splash on them got in there, so that one shows first. All right, this black hole that's oh a thousand light years from Earth. Um, um, they're hard to see. <laughs> yeah, likely. Um, you know, it's a teller black hole. Yeah. And thanks AC for waiting. The smaller they are, the faster they evaporate. Right. That's yeah. the black hole, right? Yeah. Now. Which is why cool. we don't really see any mini black holes. You know, like theoretically, you could have an asteroid's mass black hole. Okay. But it wouldn't be around anymore. Oh, all right. Because, you know, if it was created anywhere near the Big Bang, it's evaporated by now. Got it. Because mm. that is, like, yeah. what, 13, 15 billion years yeah. now? Yeah. It all wouldn't right. be able to draw in enough stuff, you know, from its gravity well <coughs> in order okay. to maintain itself. Okay. All right. Um, tell you what, Cliff, we're going to go ahead and do our ephemeris, and we'll wrap it Finish up. up. Uh, but thank yeah, thanks so much. We are going to try to connect with Grant again. I'm so sorry he is not here tonight. We are a little bit worried about him, in fact, because I've completely lost touch with him like over a week ago. So I'm not sure what happened. So, all right. Okay. Thanks, all right, Cliff. you take care. And, Likewise. Uh, I'll see you next. Um, I'll watch you next week. Awesome. Like usual. Thanks, thanks so much. It's really Saturday cool. over here. And, uh, it's Saturday over here in Australia, so uh, yep. we, we, we're. I'm, I'm actually um, in a time time warp. You're you're behind me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks so much. We'll talk All to right, you later. Guys. Bye. Take take care. See you later. Bye bye. Bye, Cliff. And uh, AC does have another comment here. Black hole formed from supernova. You can see the supernova explosion. Yep. All right. Very cool. Yep. And then. Splash has a. Oh, sorry, I missed one here. Uh, splash Adam, what happened? Two black holes. Oh, that actually uh, happened. And we talked about there's a project out there that you can help with. And it is, do you remember what that was called? That was the, um, with the LIDAR, the blip. The yeah. <laughs> but um, essentially, basically, when two black holes collide, you just add their masses together. <coughs> so, yeah. you know, so it's not going to be. You know, two black, two stellar black holes aren't going to become like a galaxy center type black hole, but it will become a, um, it will become essentially a two stellar, you know, a twice as big or whatever it is. And yeah, gravitational waves. That's what. Oops, I missed one. At. Sorry. Yeah, LIGO. That was it. And we, we talked about that because there's a project. It's on Zooniverse, mm -hmm. the project uh, for. Yeah, we did a show recently, AC, about uh, a project that they're doing for you. you it's a citizen science, pro science project, and you can help them uh, with the LIGO data. That's what it is. Yep. All right. So let's see. Can two supermassive black holes collide? Yeah, we were, we were just talking about yeah. that. I hope that helps, Splash. Let us yeah, know Splash. if we yeah, still look, look have the, questions. Look at the LIGO stuff, and you'll see exactly yes. what happens. LIGO, exactly. Cool. All right. So... What you can see in the night sky this week, we are talking about July 30th through August the 6th. And it's sort of <coughs> quiet. <coughs> Except for right here. Except for Jeff. Uh, so July 31st, that's uh, tomorrow. Uh, the It's the last quarter moon. This rises at midnight and sets at noon the next day. The um, Also, Uranus and the moon are in conjunction. You want to look east around midnight the moon is rising about then and it's easily seen naked eye but uranus requires optical aid <laughs> august 2nd saturn, uh, saturn is at opposition uh it's opposite the sun and sky so the sun earth saturn and it's actually one of the very best times that you can take photos of the planets when they're in opposition that kind of thing all right and then we're back to august 6th uh, Friday night show will find us on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Uh, if you are someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, and astronomy, like we were going to have Grant talk uh, about investing in space companies uh, for the regular for regular people, uh, we would love to share our live, and we will bring Grant back as as soon as we possibly can next Friday, August the sixth. We are, uh, unless we have a guest, we're going to talk about uh, the Zwicky Chemical Factory. Jeff, what's uh, what's the project? Real quick, just a little bit yeah, about just that. Real quick, what you do is you match the, um, they have um, 
essentially spectra of various objects in space. Okay. And computer generated um, matches to the spectra. They'll have four or five for each one, computer generated ones. You just pick the best one so that you can train the you can train the AI <coughs> to do that. <coughs> Sorry, poor Jeff. We won't make him talk anymore. <laughs> so it's actually you get to help train the computers. All right. So um, we are talking with some more people who are uh, going to be, you know, they're in line to be guests. We have Chris Kent, who has um, uh, already talked to us about August the 27th. Valerie Bailey, we're talking to, and Chelsea Good and Don Dowdy. So fingers crossed. We have a few more guests coming in the pipeline for you. So uh, if you have any more questions, get us quick, because uh, we'll have to catch you later, either in uh, Facebook or YouTube. Um, but yeah, if you, if, you, if you tell us quick right now, we'll, we'll try and help you out. And uh, maybe it'll be a show someday, because all these things are interesting, and there's a lot more to talk about them, I'm sure. And if you know people that could be a guest, let us know. We'll... Uh, We'll try and connect with them and bring them on and talk about all these. Ah, here we go. Splash Autumn. Thanks so much. Uh, galaxy collisions chaotic. Ooh, that's a really good question. If two have collided, how long will the new galaxy formation take? Will oh it be my. fast? Will it take millions of years? What will happen? Millions of years. Ah, yeah. Because when galaxies collide, they don't actually hit each other. The chance of any one star hitting another star oh, yeah, they is of... very small. They'll, basically, the galaxies go through each other, but they gravitationally will affect the, each other. And so right. it just basically swirls things around. Um, yeah. And if, you know, if they're just going past each other, they'll end up with trails between each other. But if they're close enough, they might or, uh, essentially orbit and, um, and merge. <coughs> Theoretically, our galaxy is a merger. Yeah, right. And you and we actually have uh, modeling, you know, mathematical models that can show what well, we've seen some out there, you know, with with so many galaxies out there, we can look at at various stages in their development yeah. Yeah. and collisions and stuff. We've seen some of what already happens when they do encounter each other. And it's mostly a gravitational thing, yeah. right? In yeah. fact, Andromeda is headed toward us. Yeah, it is. Not yeah. in our lifetimes, so we don't have to worry yeah. about it. It's, but eventually it's going to, it's, it's like going to billions of years quote, hit us unquote, <laughs> which basically means it'll pass through us. Yeah. They'll just, the two will just merge in some form or other. There's, there's some, I think there's some models out there about that too, right? So you know what's going to happen. They've bottled yeah. back out of it. Yeah, all right. All right, well, let's give Jeff a rest, and thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Splash Autumn, AC, Cliff, Dan. Let's see, did I miss anybody? I'm going back through the chat. <laughs> thanks so much for joining. Really appreciate all your comments. Really, oh, Dustin. Uh, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Nice to nice to have you. Uh, Dustin again. Who else? Who else? Who else? I think that's it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, people. We will see you again next week. We'll be here anyway. And hopefully you can come back as well. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night. <laughs>